So this morning's uh, scripture is taken from two places, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 and Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we give you thanks for the reading of your word. We pray, Lord God, even as we look to your word this morning, you will speak to us and your word may encourage our hearts and your word will challenge us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about so much unwelcomed changes into our lives. It has brought about weariness and tiredness at almost all levels of our lives. We find ourselves trying to cope with the drastic changes that the pandemic has imposed upon us. Many people have experienced losses in their lives and that has brought about much anxiety and distress. Now, besides the, uh, the pandemic in, its, in itself, people were also suffering from a lot of other crises. Um, the unemployment rate increased and we saw how domestic violence were on the rise. It was reported by the Women's Aid Association, which is, a, which is an NGO that supports abused women and children. They reported that there has been an increase of 360% <laughs> of distress calls. An increase, huh? 360 percent of distress calls during the first lockdown. More and more people were getting depressed and hence we also saw a rise in the suicide attempts. The Royal Malaysian Police Force released an astonishing figure of 468 suicide cases just within the first five months of the year 20. 21. Now, if you're wondering where I got all these numbers, I got it from an article written by one of our Malaysian activists. Alright, she wrote an article and then I, I, on, it, it is online and so I, I got these figures uh, from that article. Many people, including those of us in the church, we have suffered and experienced many losses. And one of the many things that people have lost in the past two years of the pandemic is this sense of connection. People were robbed of the ability or rather the freedom to meet one another or even to hang out uh, with one another. You know, people find themselves being disconnected due to the multiple levels of lockdowns that we experienced as a nation. The usual and familiar way of worshipping God as a church family was disrupted. You know, we were robbed of the ability to come together, to sing praises together, to worship together in person in a church. Then the usual way of communicating and relating with the church family was also interrupted. We could not have fellowship together. You know, we 
even CGs could not meet at home. We were so afraid to meet. And even if we meet, you know, when, when the restrictions was a little bit eased, when we meet and we are also quite afraid if the neighbours would be happy about that, we could not meet, we could not have fellowship together. And that has, in a sense, created a void within our hearts. You know, we are forced to change, forced to change the way and the manner in which we live our lives and in the, in the manner in the, we do ministry. You know, it is said that there's three stages that people go through when they are confronted with changes. When they are confronted with change, there are three stages. The first stage is that people will resist the change. First stage. The second stage is people will tolerate the change. And the third stage is people will begin to embrace the changes. Example. If you think about the SOP of wearing the mask, okay, let's take that for an example. At the beginning, people resisted the idea of wearing the mask. Why should I cover my face? Who are you to tell me to cover my face? I mean, it's not so serious here in Malaysia, but we do hear of stories like that, right? Correct or not? Then, people began tolerating the idea of wearing masks. What to do, must wear all. If not, gonna fine. From 1,000, jump to 10,000. Where? Got so much money to pay. Tolerate, we wear. Then, now we see people began to embrace the idea of wearing the mask. I tell you how. People now start buying different colours, different patterns. You know, must suit the outfit. You know, must, this colour must suit this outfit. That pattern will suit this outfit. I told myself, you know, maybe after this, should just buy all black. You know, black will suit any baju colour. Black will suit. We begin to embrace the idea of wearing a mask. But all these forced changes, whether we have embraced it or we have not embraced it, you know, it has indeed caused much losses. People have lost their sense of connection. Even someone whom I know, I need to see carefully whether I know the person because half the face is covered. And I cannot recognize, especially if I see them in, 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 in Aeon, grocery shopping. I cannot recognize. I went back to Ipo and I went to this Aeon to buy some things and, and this guy stopped me and then he... He, he, knew, he knew my family, he knew my parents, and then he, when he saw my blur eyes, he actually took out his mask for a while. And when he took it, I said, oh, okay, this uncle, right? You know, really, we, we, we just can't connect and can't see uh, people. So, but of course, yeah, we, we use technology to connect and, and relate with people, but really, it isn't quite the same anymore. So we need to, you know, in fact, we, we must intentionally find ways to reconnect, you know, with God and also with one another because the SOPs are here to stay, I believe, for quite a while. But we cannot remain this connected. We need to intentionally be connected. Our church leadership came together and together, we discerned, you know, our church, the LCEC as well as the CG leaders, we came together for our planning meeting, for the planning meeting last year, and we discerned the Lord calling us as a church to return to Him. We discern a need to once again reconnect ourselves back to God. And as a church, we need to, you know, we felt God telling us that we need to reconnect back to Him and also with one another. We need to understand, my dear friends, that you know, although we have experienced tremendous changes in the ways we live our lives, our Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it is true at all aspects of our lives. I was really blessed by the new song that was introduced this now. Maybe that should be our church song team 
for the coming two years. You know, God's power never changed. God's mercies for us never changed. God's love for us never changed. You know, although we experience so many forms of changes in our lives. We as a church, we need to once again place our hope in God so that He may renew our strength. We need to strengthen our walk with God so that He may enable us to once again soar on wings like eagles. So the, the theme for our church for the coming two years, 2022 and 2023, 2022 and 2023 is to reconnect with God and with one another. Reconnect with God and with one another. We need to understand that both our vertical relationship as well as our horizontal relationships are important. The vertical re Relationship represents our relationship with God and the horizontal relationship represents our relationship with one another. And for us, for us who have placed our trust in Jesus, for us who are believers of our Lord Jesus Christ, our relationship with God will enhance our relationship with one another. So as, as it says, you know, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, we love because He first loved us. Now we need to understand that it is out of God's love for us that we are able to love one another. It is out of the kindness and the generosity that God has shown to us that we are able to show that kind of kindness and generosity to one another. The goodness that we experience from God will spill into the re our relationships with one another. So we want to focus our attention in reconnecting ourselves to God and to one another. So that will be our church team. Reconnect with God and with one another. And the key scripture text for these two for these team. We have two. One is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, which says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And Hebrews 13, 8, which says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the prophet, prophet Isaiah says that those who hope in the Lord, now some other translation uses the word wait, those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles and they will run and not grow tired and they will walk steadily for they will not faint. Now, if you look at Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40 begins with the prophet bringing to the people a message of comfort. The people of Israel have been taken captive and they are in exile uh, in Babylon. The exile is now over and the people had been told to return home to Jerusalem. Now, the exile can be described what exile means is that it can be described as a prolonged absence from one's country imposed by a vested authority. So what happens during exile is that people are disconnected from their place of origin. They have been forced, taken away into a totally new environment where they are required to adapt and embrace. They probably will go through the three stages. Uh, what is the three stages? Resist, tolerate, and embrace. So Israel went into exile and now they are coming back. They are returning to their homes in Jerusalem. And this message of comfort is from God that 
Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah was bringing to them. He said, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her heart service had been completed, has been completed, that her sins has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. This is a message of comfort and hope to a nation that has gone through tremendous changes. The nation of Israel was taken away from their homes. They were disconnected from their homeland and taken into captivity. And not only does God bring this message of comfort, but he also brings to the people a message of hope and a promise that their lives will be renewed, a promise. So if we look towards the end of Isaiah chapter 40, uh, from verses 28 onwards, verses 28 to 31, we see that promise of renewal. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Likewise, my dear friends, we as a nation, we as a church, we as a family, and as an individual, we have been through so much in the year 2021. Some of us will outrightly say that the year 2021 was such a difficult year. Some of us may say that. And not just because of the pandemic, we may be facing some other problems as well. It can be sickness, it can be our health issues, it can be some other problems that we face in life. But friends, yes, although we have been through so much, and as we step, as we have already stepped into the year 2022, we are still uncertain about what and how this new year will be. But God invites us once again to return to him. God once again invites us to reconnect back to him. He calls us once again to place our hope in the Lord. And he summons us to wait on him because he will renew us. He will give us the strength to soar on wings like eagle. He will help us to run and not grow weary. He will help us to walk and not faint. That is the promise that comes to each one of us as we begin this new year. This morning, my dear friends, this morning, if you sense that your life has been disconnected from God, if you sense within your heart that you have been for some reason, being away from God due to all that is happening, this morning the Lord invites us back to him. He invites us to once again place our hope in the Lord. And would you or would we do that this morning? Secondly, we want to be able to reconnect with one another. Yes, God created us as an individual. God has fearfully and wonderfully made each one of us. And as much as we are an individual, uniquely fashioned by God, but God has placed us in a community. Therefore, our lives does not only consist of our relationship with God, 
but it also consists of our relationships with one another. Our relationship with one another matters to God. Community life matters to God. Do you know that? Do we know that? How? How do you know that? How do you know that? I think we know that if we look at the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. If we look at the book of Exodus, we will read about how God delivered the Israelites from the, Egypt, from the Egyptians. Correct? Uh, Israelites were in bondage in Egypt, in Egypt and uh, God sent Moses to lead the people out of slavery. God brought them through by crossing the Red Sea. You remember the Red Sea? Crossing the Red Sea and then they travelled until they reached Mount Sinai and they camped there. The whole nation of Israel was camped there at Mount Sinai. And at Mount Sinai, God consecrated the people and set them apart to be His people. Right? His people. So these people now were to live together as a community belonging to God. So they were no longer captives. They, are not, they, they now belong to God and it is here that we see God giving the Israelites these Ten Commandments. These were commandments that will govern the way they are to live their lives. So if you just take a look at these commandments here, these commandments here, the first four commandments are given to guide our relationship with God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is our vertical relationship. Uh, it, these four commandments guide our relationship with God. I mean the Israelites. Lah, huh? The remaining six commandments are given to guide the relationship with one another. The Israelites were to live together as a community in that place. They're all camping there. They are to live together as a community. And that's the remaining six commandments. Honour your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet. All this has got to do, all these six has got to do with relationships with one another in a community. God has led the Israelites out of Egypt and he has brought them to a place whereby they are to live as a community belonging to God. So these rules, rules, are really not some kind of a burden, you know. You think God has no nothing, to, nothing better to do? Ah, yeah, just give them these rules and torture them. No. God gave these commandments to help the Israelites to live together as a community. These were given so that people would live well with one another. You just imagine without this. Happily going around killing people, happily going around stealing, there will not be community life. So these commandments are crucial for our life with God, the first four, and also our community life when we live with one another. In the eyes of God, my dear friends, both our relationship with God and with one another is important. And hence, this is what we as a church, we want to focus our attention in the coming two years. We want to be able to reconnect ourselves back to God and we also want to be able to reconnect ourselves with one another. So I would like to, you know, I would like to 
urge us, and also for those of us who are worshipping from home, if you are able to, my dear friends, please come back. Come back to church and, come and let us reconnect with one another. Let us worship God as a community. If you are able to, please do come back. You know, there are still spaces in the church. You know, please do come back. And we, we really, as a church, we want to be able to reconnect and we want to, be, we want to really be able to live as a community, worshipping God and serving the community, doing that which God has placed in the heart of Wesley Klang. So I plead with you, all those of us who are worshipping with us from home, I plead with you to come back, if you are able to come back. So what we will essentially do from our pulpit, pulpit is that we will be looking at biblical characters. We will look at how these biblical characters communed with God and how they related to one another. So for this year, the year 2022, we will begin with a series of sermons from the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis, we shall look at how God communicated with the characters in Genesis and learn from their relationship with God. You know, some of them will teach us important lessons that we should imitate, and some would warn us of the pitfalls that we must avoid. Okay, so, so not biblical characters, not everything also follow them, so you must know what they're telling you. Some serve as examples we imitate. Some serve as warning. Some encounters, some stories in the, in the Bible will serve as a warning to us. So we will, we will look at Adam and Eve. We will look at uh, Cain and Abel. Okay, Cain, Abel and Cain will, will be a, a warning lesson to us. You see, look at the picture there. They are not even friends. Right? And then we will look at Noah. We will look at Abraham, you know, Jacob and Esau, Joseph. You know, we will look at characters. So in a sense, we won't be doing chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Not like that. But we will, we will look at some of... We will pick and choose uh, passages in Genesis that will focus on these characters. And then we will look at how God related to them. We will look at the conversations that they had with God, how they communicated with God, how they connected to God, and how they lived as a community. So this is what we will begin the year in 2022. And as we go on for next year, uh, we pray that God will lead us uh, into what we will look at. Right? So we will begin next week by looking at what it means to be made in the image of God. You know, when God created men, he, he made both men and women in his image, the image of God. And we will see next week what that means uh, for us.